All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Thank you for joining us today. Um, today's session is entitled Providing Counseling to Boys and Men of Color, Culturally Sensitive Theory and Practice. And our presenter today is James Harris, licensed professional counselor and founder of Men to Heal, author of Man Just Express Yourself, and creator of Cheesy Dates Board Games. Um, before we get started, there's a few housekeeping rules that we'd like to address. Speakers, please remember that we are using live captioning and interpreting services. When you first introduce yourself today, whether it be as a speaker or a participant later on, please include a physical description of yourself and your preferred pronouns, such as my name is Caitlin Joseph. Um, I'm with DLCV. I am a white woman with straight brown hair and glasses. I'm wearing a teal floral blouse and have the DLCV Summit um, blue background. My preferred pronouns are she, her. This will help um, give contact to the attendees who might be blind or vision impaired and will also help our interpreters and captioners locate who's speaking on the screen. Please stay muted at all times unless you're the speaker and please hold all questions until the end. We do have a chat box that will be uh, monitored by me and the chat box is used for questions only or directed as by the session speaker. At the end of each session, moderators will select some questions from the chat box. If your question is chosen, you can decide to take yourself off of mute or um, type your question in the box and I will read it aloud. All right, and we can get started. Thank you, Mr. Harris, for being with us today. And we are excited for the session. Good morning, good morning. I am James Harris. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Uh, so Caitlin, can you hear me okay? All right, so if you got me, I'm going to think that everybody else has me too. I'm not sure how many we have, but we're gonna get rocking and rolling even if we have just one person. Um, so I appreciate the introduction. I am James Harris. I am a African-American male, um, black, tattoos, um, go by he, pronouns him, you know. Uh, and I think that was it as far as the introduction that those people need um, who, are, who are impaired. So. Um, if not, then feel free to just envision this mystical figure, you know, and, and be soothed by the sounds of my voice as we have this uh, next 45 minutes to discuss some topics that are uh, prevalent to our community, um, specifically to um, you, because you're probably in a position to where you're a therapist and or somebody in a legal background to where you're assisting clients who are probably introduced to the stigma um, as frequently as pretty much anybody, you know, so whatever capacity you're joining us with, I definitely appreciate you. I'm honored to be here. I do speaking engagements all over the world. I'm just fortunate to have one here at home. Um, and of course, I wish we was in person, but unfortunately, we're not. So we're gonna have to deal with this Zoom thing. Um, so yes, I'll be talking about ending the stigma, of course, with men and boys, because um, it's something that I enjoy doing, because it's not a lot of people out there who are helping who look like me um, or who had the journey or outlooks that I've had, uh, whether that's been a black male, whether that's been a veteran, whether that's being a, um, a male therapist for that matter, a black male therapist for that matter, you know? So it's just a collection of information that I think I can provide and I'm planning to do that and I will continue to do that. Um, and so if you out there and on this uh, segment and you're a male, please take some away. If you are a woman out there, you also can take some away in case you have a spouse or a son or a brother or a uh, male colleague who can use this information. Just ensure that you are uh, taking something to give back to those who might want to benefit from it. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to ensure that everybody is getting fed today. So again, uh, she gave a brief introduction of who I am. And if you was on the uh, se section or the session at nine o'clock, that was a pretty much a short keynote that I did about 30 minutes talking about several different things and who I am. Um, but if you weren't on that section, allow me to tell you who I am. So I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a veteran, multiple business owner. I'm located right here in Richmond. I graduated from bachelor's. I attended St. Paul's uh, College, which is no longer with us. It was one of the oldest HBCUs in the country. But of course, they didn't get funding like many institutions do, sadly. Um, so I went to St. Paul's College and I went to South University. I got a bachelor's in 
clinical psychology. Then I got my master's in clinical, clinical mental health counseling. And then, of course, I'm licensed by the state of Virginia to provide therapy. Um, I have a practice on Arthur Ashe Boulevard, which might not be far from many of you. Um, it's on the bus line, is easily accessible to those who are in need in the Richmond area. And of course, I can provide telehealth therapists throughout Virginia. Um, at the Healing Hub, which is my practice, I offer yoga, Zumba, mindfulness, um, in addition to outpatient therapy. Pre-pandemic, feeding the less fortunate every third Saturday. But of course, you can't do that now. Stuff got to be pre-packaged. So many different factors. Um, so I just paused on that right now. I may pick it up later. Um, but the main thing is to provide resources and access to availability for people in the community who might not have them readily available. If somebody who want to stop paying high bills or renting, you know, they don't know that they can afford a home. So that's why I bring first time home buying seminars or it's probably uh, somebody challenged with their identity uh, in the LGBTQ community who don't know the resources to talk to their parents or to be free as themselves. So that's why I bring LGBTQ seminars and restoration of rights for those returning citizens, so many different factors. So the healing hub is just like what it sounds, the healing hub. So if you're in the Richmond area, feel free to reach out to me. If you want to donate, assist, uh, volunteer, or whatever the case is, feel free to email me later or we can talk online and figure out how we can continue to further the mission. Um, also, yes, I'm an author of a book called Man, Just Express Yourself, which is an interactive planner guide for boys and men to better express themselves. Sometimes men have difficulty um, articulating our feelings and what they want to say, you know, and society has not been favorable upon men and being expressive. So that's why I created this tool. It's over 65 different topics. Um, so again, if you are a woman on this call and you have a male in your life, this will be a great tool for him. Um, and you can do these as a subtle way of enhancing the relationship between y'all and not necessarily making it seem like he needs to change or it's a chore to him, you know, so feel free to uh, inquire about that book as well. And of course, I do a lot of other community service outside of my practice. Um, you might see the shield behind me. I'm a member of the Omega Sci Fi fraternity, which is a D9 organization. I'm very proud of that. So many different wonderful connections and collaborations um, are happening, not only uh, locally, but internationally. So, you know, if you do want information on that as well, or have questions, um, I just figured I should mention that because in the last section, somebody asked uh, about the shield. Um, so again, feel free to ask any question later that you can. Also, um, I did create a, a board game for adults or couples, you know, it's very interactive. Um, in case you are challenged with communication issues throughout your relationship, whether it's talking about finance or intimacy or, um, you know, just lifestyle. So just ensure that you inquire about that as well. But everything is on my website. It's also a YouTube page on my website, too, if people want to send, uh, I guess, information to their loved ones, whether it's talking about trauma, grief or communication or healthy relationships or just so many different factors. Uh, uh, I did YouTube videos for just so people um, who are in this vicinity can have that information, uh, being that I do a lot of stuff internationally. So I'm fortunate for platforms like social media and YouTube and stuff like that. Um, so for me personally, why do I think it's important for um, people to understand that it is a stigma or a difference between men and women uh, seeking services. I did it for a couple of different reasons. Um, talk about accountability, breaking the cycle, uh, just different awareness. And of course, it was a need for it. So if you look throughout different statistics, you will see that men die younger than women. Um, there are pretty much a lot more illnesses during the lifetime of men at a younger age. And they become chronic over a, a span because the lack of early detection, the lack of um, men willing to go to the doctor, whether it's physical issues or mental issues, you know, they'll much rather deal, it, deal with it or with themselves or by themselves. So again, men die faster than women. Overall, the mortality rate is like 41% higher uh, for men than women, you know? So just make sure that you understand that eight out of 10 leading causes of death um, are uh, uh, prescribed to men. So those things are unfortunate. Again, if you're a man on this call or if you are a woman who have a, man, a male in your life, just make sure that you understand that they might... Uh, 
want to reach out for help, but might not necessarily know how to do that. So it's definitely important that we're putting ourselves in a position to be able to observe those um, challenges or cries for help or the uh, information that they might be displaying as a, a sign of assistance. It might not be verbally articulated as, hey, help me, I need your help. It can be in the form of reckless behavior. And of course, we'll talk about that. But when we continue to talk about different statistics that men uh, have, that women tend to uh, get treated more rapidly for, just pretty much overall, if you look at it, I've seen a survey from the National Ambulance uh, Care System, and they were talking about based on age, race, uh, different insurance coverage, and so many other factors, women still go to the doctor more, about 33% more than men, you know, so if we still want to do the numbers, those things are, excuse me, definitely uh, in the favor of women. And then, of course, women have more some women have more uh, support circles who embrace them a little bit more, and they're more open to seeking uh, professional help. You know, the ego sometimes get in the way uh, for some men to seek assistance outside, or they've been scarred previously in a relationship, uh, whether platonic or romantic, to where they don't feel comfortable with being vulnerable or open up. And, and also the statistics as far as 33% of women seeking medical or mental um, help before a man would doesn't even include the pregnancy piece. So, you know, it's still a, a whole list of emergencies or issues and early detection that could be prevented if men just paid attention to them or uh, didn't feel that they didn't have to pay attention to them. You know, so just make sure that you also understand that about one third of people in the United States, 14% um, of men, you know, have mental health issues that they don't address. Uh, only 60% of men go for treatment for depression or anxiety, 72% of women or higher uh, definitely go for depression or anxiety. So that right there is like a 12% difference. Um, and then, of course, when we break that down based on ethnicity, uh, white, black, you know, those things tend to increase a little, probably about 9 to 10% higher for white women compared to males as well. Uh, within that same range, you know, so it's also important to note that the prescription uh, drug situation or medication to improve mental health is less than 9% too, uh, that men follow up with those, you know, you don't want to take them because you're drowsy or you are in a career where you operate heavy machinery or so many other factors to, you know, or, you know, you are rather self-medicate. So it's so many different things to create those barriers of why men should definitely uh, reduce those stigmas, you know, and of course we need your help, you know, if you're out there, the more advocates that we can have within this field is definitely more beneficial. So as far as substance use, of course, five, is over 5 million men that report that they use substances, whether alcohol, drugs, um, you know, marijuana or anything, you know, above those drugs, men are likely to seek treatment for abuse of like sleeping aids. Um, you know, so, but as far as the actual addiction, they don't really go for, to get treated for those things. Men are likely to develop addiction to substance use um, way more rapidly than women would, you know, and most of those reasons are some of the reasons I spoke about not too long ago. So men are likely to develop a severe addiction or disorder and they likely coexist, you know, co-occurring disorder. So one can have uh, depression and anxiety and or a substance use issue. And now they're just feeding off each other because you didn't address one or the other when they were in the infancy stages. Um, so, of course, knowing all that information, doing research, that led me to act on this, you know, why it was important for me to be that person to speak up and to introduce men to different things or to allow them to see that it's okay to be vulnerable, let your family, friends, or co-workers or teammates in to assist you with navigating your journey of life and to uh, also be an advocate for different lifestyle choices, which is also important because sometimes you change your life or you change your environment, you change your eating habits, you change your interaction with certain people, those things can assist you in transferring uh, to be a better version of yourself. So I found within, um, you know, a, a micro dose of information, just talking to my immediate circle, the men in my family, men I associate with, um, you know, they were having issues and they don't 
address them unless it's pointed out. So of course, the moms, the daughters, the spouses um, are hoping that the loved one, the male loved one in our life change. But, you know, it's not really a lot of platforms who support that. Uh, so I figured I had to do what I had to do as far as introducing those things. So um, back in grad school, we had this assignment. If it was one population that you can work with, who would it be? Um, as a veteran, you know, initially I chose veterans because I thought that was, you know, like a population who need assistance, which they still do. Um, a couple other people from my cohort, they chose women rights, they chose LGBTQ, they chose um, maternal death, just different populations like that. So for me, I looked around my cohort and I, I realized like I was the only black male out of 13, um, only black male. It was only three males. And the rest were uh, women, um, different ethnicities, uh, mostly white, though. One was Asian. The other one was um, Hispanic, you know. So just looking at that around my cohort, I realized, too, that would be a part of the stigma. Because now I am going into a, another field of limited resources for men who look like me. So I took that on as a project. Um, and what I did with that information from the assignment is pretty much a survey. It was maybe uh, 1,700 questions or so. I asked men and women, you know, I did it to increase their awareness, but of course, to educate them on the disparities and the difference, you know. So I started having quarterly forms post-graduation at my uh, building. So I used to own an art gallery on Hall Street and uh Started having forums there for the public and the community, men and mental health, athletes and mental health, um, incarceration and mental health, just so many different factors to address issues in which impact men or families that oftentimes don't go address. Um, so the seminars continue to grow and grow. And, you know, before I knew it, it was pretty much a. A, a, a movement, pretty much, and that's how we got here, so. In this discussion, we'll be touching on how men deal with mental health issues, how to deal with depression, uh, substance use is something that's prevalent as well, and even suicide and trauma. And a lot of times also anger management go undressed because that's displaced anger or um, the lack of emotional maturity to allow them to uh, regulate that emotion. So it's so many different factors on why men do what they do, opposed to just being a stubborn man, um, in which you probably see on social media or in movies and stuff like that. So please don't get caught up in the Hollywood notion or the uh, fictional notion of um, those things. Sometimes men really do have certain issues or ailments or uh, um, issues that they don't address or don't know how to, again, articulate um, their actual feelings. So they do things, whether it's reckless behavior and or um, those dysregulation of emotions, you know. So again, within the survey, I was able to talk to about 1,500 men uh, between the ages of 18 and 70. Um, and we talked about physicals. We talked about going to see a doctor. We talked about serious mental health and physical conditions that they may or may not do. Um, and out of that survey, again, they, it was about 200 or so women, you know, they stated that their husbands, their fathers, um, brothers, pretty much the males in their life didn't have a physical within the last year, or they never been to therapy. So again, all of this is data collection. I'm just trying to internalize and analyze why or what the issues may be, you know, and 19% uh, of them specific males admitted that you know that loved one won't stop nagging them or or they go because that loved one is nagging them um you know or they pretty much made the appointment for them so all of those things are definitely prevalent so within the survey men said i only go to the doctor when i'm extremely sick um i'm healthy i have no reason to go to a doctor or therapist um, I prefer to treat myself. You know, again, that's what a lot of people tend to do, self-medicate or ignore the signs and symptoms that they may have. Um, some of them say, I have no time to go to a doctor. So they're working multiple hours or you got to do so many other different things, side jobs and stuff like that. So it's definitely important to understand that. Um, and a lot of them didn't have insurance, you know, so access and availability was an issue. A lot of them didn't know where to seek a good primary care doctor or a doctor or a mental health professional, you know, so and um, the alarming 
answers that were gathered from that were I'm afraid of finding something out uh, that might be wrong with me. So we're talking about anything, whether minor issues or chronic issues. A lot of people don't want to find out if there is something wrong with them, specifically men in that case. I don't know a good doctor or therapist in my area. Um, also, 33% of men prevent, um, you know, said nothing prevented them from going to a doctor. They just prefer not to see a doctor and therapist. They think that it's a, uh, if I don't see or feel different symptoms, then I'm good to go. So the downside to that is, as far as physical issues, that might be true. So if I bump my head and I can, you know, I'll feel a, you know, I can feel the swelling or the pulsating, or I can see the knot. The difference is with the mental health side or the emotional side of it, you're unable to sometimes see your own issues um, because they're not as prevalent or displayed as uh, the physical issues. You know, you can wrap your head or you can put a bandage on it if it starts bleeding. But if you got mental or emotional issues and you're not addressing them, what do you do? They're going to continue to pile. They're going to continue to increase. They're going to continue to um, probably display themselves or manifest themselves in an area in which you can't control. And now you're not only affecting yourself, but you're affecting the people vicariously around you, whether that's your partner, your coworkers, your teammates, or uh, whomever else you, you come in contact with. So a, a couple of different definitions. Um, I don't want anybody to speak out loud or put it in a chat, but just think to yourself, what, it, what do you think the definition of health is? So. Just think about that. The definition of health. What do you think that is? So, all right. So just, you know, y'all probably a smart group. I'm sure y'all highly educated. But the definition of health um, is pretty much a level of functioning for a the efficiency of a living organism. So that's pretty much the definition of health. Um, the definition of mental health. What do you think that is? Just, you know, say it to yourself, think about it in your head, just just overall, just think about what the definition of mental health is. So the definition of mental health is, of course, your psychological well-being, your physical logical uh, well-being, you know, the state of someone who is functioning at a satisfactory level of emotional and behavior adjustments. Um, and most of the times, too, you know, this is pretty much the um, idea of your overall wellness. So mental health, again, it's not just psychological, emotional, it's pretty much your physical, logical too. All those things coexist together. Um, probably within the last 15 years, a lot of doctors, therapists, psychologists, and so many other people now know that the mind and body is one. At first, they were addressing them separately, uh, but now we know physical health issues can create mental health issues, and mental health issues can create physical health issues. And an example of that is, uh, let's say somebody have hypertension or, um, you know, cancer. So, those physical health issues now got you thinking constantly or in a state of anxiety, which is going to increase your likelihood of having depression or whatever the case is. And also, we know heart disease is number one killer among African-American men and women. Um, heart disease can lead to those mental health issues as well. And, and mental health can lead to heart disease or hypertension or diabetes just based on the impact of those ruminating thoughts, the uh, lack of attentiveness attentiveness to your uh, mental health, you know, overstimulated, hypervigilance, all these things, uh, the physical signs of mental health can lead to the uh, increase of physical illnesses too. Um, and the last definition I want you to think of where you are is stigma. What do you think stigma is and why it's important? So stigma, you don't have to put it in the chat. You can just think about what it is or what you think it means. So when you hear stigma or when you uh, somebody is associated with the definition of stigma, it's pretty much the disapproval of or the discriminated against a person based on perceived social characteristics that uh, severe to diminish the other pe people from uh, different members in society. So those things are important. So based on a collective view, these people are considered outcasts or this is considered a stigma in which we're going to avoid or whatever the case is. So oftentimes those stigmas are 
assessed or implemented or projected onto men in which they can't display certain feelings or characteristics or they will be deemed less than a man or whatever the case is, which is unfortunate in most cases because a lot of men probably do want help. They just don't know where to get it or why um, they should get it. You know, so those things are definitely important. So just make sure that you're putting yourself in a position again to allow your loved ones to come to you um, or if you are that person, just make sure that you are um, identifying people that you can go to. So when we talk about mental health uh, overall, it's so many different lessons that can be learned or passed down throughout the years. You know, some men are definitely stubborn, but some are, you know, have adverse actions. They figure they can handle things themselves. You know, so it's a lot of deflection, a lot of rumors. Um and I'm sure y'all probably heard this, that men take better care of their cars than they do their own bodies. Um, so, you know, that's a that's a rumor. That's uh, something that people have been seeing and saying over a period of time. And when it comes to de- depression, what I tend to do in my sessions is educate men on the uh, signs and symptoms of depression, because oftentimes men think depression is a woman diagnosis. Uh, and, you know, rightfully so, just based on how Hollywood paints the, pre- the the image or the picture of depression. So, like, if you look at movies or a TV show, depression is often viewed as this woman eating a tub of ice cream, crying to her homegirls. Um, so that gets overlooked when you have this huge, big, dominant man thinking, I can't be depressed. But when I educate him on the signs and symptoms of depression, you know, he tends to be like, oh, man, that, that that feels right. It's true. So men tend to have the physical signs uh, that often accompany depressions, um, such as like when I say physical signs of depression, I'm talking about back pain. I'm talking about headaches, uh, difficulty sleeping, gastrointestinal issues and sexual problems. You know, so they don't um, contribute those to depression because they're not that image that Hollywood has painted of I'm not sitting on the couch crying or I'm not, you know, holding in my feelings or whatever case is. So they don't know that also they can have those physical signs of depression. So again, it's all about education. Men are more likely to deny their feelings, have them from others um, and try to mask them before others see their behavior and think something is wrong with them. You know, so it's also so many different classical signs of depression that men tend to overlook, whether it's mood, loss of interest and pleasure, the work hobbies, weight loss, uh, the sleep disturbances um, and anger. You know, uh, depression symptoms, anger, substance use, agitation, constantly, you know, avoiding uh, certain situations or certain people. He should be able to view those things as, hey, something's not right. Uh, why am I acting like this or why am I experiencing these things so just make sure that we under that and then of course when we shift that to um, not addressing them some men have a reach of substance use which is more than half the people who struggle with addiction suffer from a core current mental disorder whether it's depression anxiety bipolar or another personality disorder so just make sure that you know uh, there is a difference and these differences can lead to those things coexisting at the same time. So now not only are you not dealing with depression, but you're masking it with the substance, uh, whether alcohol or um, something, marijuana or something even uh, a little bit more potent. Um, so just make sure that you're understanding that, you know, these underlying issues definitely co-occur. Um, and they also should be diagnosed and treated. Um, some people treat them together. Some people treat them separately. So it all depends on you and how those things are impacting or impairing your day-to-day action. And also when you have mental health issues that you're not addressing, unfortunately, the substance use is not even the worst of it, not even the last phase of it, because some people um, would tend to want to die by suicide, you know. So according to the CDC, men are more likely to die by suicide than women. Uh, of course, we know from statistical information that women are tip suicide more, but men are more likely to be a little bit more lethal and carry it out, you know, whether that's a gun or stabbing um, and, and so many more uh, factors that may impact that. So just make sure that you're understanding that. 
Um, and oftentimes, too, men deal with a lot of trauma and grief that they don't know that they have. It goes unaddressed, similar to what I said about the depression. So if you're not sure what trauma is, I talked briefly about it earlier in that uh, first session, but trauma is definitely one of those things that you can witness and or be a part of yourself. So just make sure that you're understanding that it's something that um, impacts your ability to cope or feel certain ailments based on um, situations, you know, so it, it impacts your ability to cope uh, from a distress situation. That's pretty much trauma. Um, and of course, anger management is something that you're probably shaking your head to like, oh man, he is always so angry or why is he angry? Um, and again, those things can be projection or it can be masking. It can be issues associated or, or by not dealing with something. Anger is oftentimes one of those secondary emotions that uh, men tend to use, you know, to cover up the actual emotion or the thing that they don't know how to um address in a, in a proper manner i guess so it can be a fear of you know just having over anxiety or me being vulnerable with you you want to take it and use it against me so i'd much rather catch your attitude than to articulate how i really feel you know or it was thrown up in a past relationship and i don't want your response to be the same thing as my last partner or i don't want to be teased by my coworkers or whatever the case is so humiliation is definitely one of those things so just make sure that um, you're understanding that some males feel intimidated when they are humiliated or put on the spot based on their vulnerability. So anger is that permitted response that some men feel that they have to have to have. Um, so let's let's talk about symptoms. So again, right where you are, I'm gonna name a couple of symptoms. You gather the answer on if these symptoms are for a man or for a woman. Um, you know, don't worry about putting it in the chat or don't worry about speaking out loud, but just think about the symptoms. Um, are these symptoms related to a man or a woman? Um, change in sleep and appetite, um, lack of concentration, loss of interest, um, lack of interest and pleasure, feeling hopeless, feeling guilty, change in movement for activities, uh, physical aches and pains, suicidal thoughts. So are those symptoms for a man or for a woman? So again, we're just I, at the 10 minutes now. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, so again, um, you are a awesome smart group. So I'm sure you know that those symptoms are for both men and women. Now, the issue is a lot of people uh, overlook those symptoms and just think they're just solely based for women. They don't, they don't believe that uh, men experience depression the same way. You know, so just make sure that you're understanding that. So if one does have a loss of interest and pleasure in activities, a change in appetite uh, and weight and all those things, sleep disturbances, feeling fatigued or agitated, um, lack of self-worth, all of those things, suicidal thoughts, uh, issues with concentrating, both men and women can have those things. However, men tend to not get grace when they do have those things because they don't know who to turn to or why they're probably experiencing these things so moving forward you have to identify how to treat those things if one is having them so the one of the most effective ways is probably um, increase your self-care you know so if you do if you are a male out there on this call wanting to know how to reduce those things or ignore the stigma especially the perception of others just make sure that you're increasing your self-care and of course if you're a woman out there you have a male in your life make sure they are increasing our self-care and welcome them to increase our self-care. So that can be journaling, that can be um, weightlifting, lifestyle changes, mindfulness, meditation, and so many other things. And of course, you also can have uh, psychotherapy, which pretty much talk therapy and, you know, get them with a therapist or get them with a therapeutic group or a men's group to ensure that they're able to process their feelings um, the difference between individual therapy and the group therapy is, is, of course, the setting. You have others in your group who sometimes have that same feeling or those same urges or have been through what you're going through or vice versa. Um, and we call that universality. So some people like me specifically uh, as a veteran uh, going to the veteran groups, you know, like not knowing. Oftentimes you can't talk to your spouse or 
you can't talk to somebody in your uh, work environment unless you're in a, a veteran friendly environment. So going to a group, you get that universality. They can recall uh, things that happened on deployment or things that happened when you were in training or, you know, navigating those feelings. So that's, that's the difference. And that's important also, you know, and a lot of people tend to go to groups over individual. However, the goal is to obtain something from that therapeutic uh, side of it. Um, and also some people use medication. So it would be up to you if you want to do that. Um, some people use mood stabilizers, antidepressants, um, and antipsychotic drugs. The issue with medication is some people feel that they can self-medicate. So substances or shrooms or psychedelics, all of those things. It's okay if you want to do that, but just make sure they're prescribed and make sure you're moderating your intake based on that. So you're not increasing the issues that you can potentially have with those things. So that's one of the unfortunate side of medication uh, because you can become addicted to medication as well even though it was prescribed. So that was something that had to change as well as far as the uh, introduction of medication and stuff like that. Also, one can do light therapy, which is pretty much exposure to different lights to change the mood and things like that. Um, also, when we're talking about dealing with men and, and getting services, we have to deal with the rumors that are addressed with those. Some of the rumors, to be honest, which you can come from religion, that personal ego, uh, from a historic standpoint. And of course, we got uh, what society. Society has not been favorable upon men too. So just take a moment and think of some of the rumors that you've heard. Um, again, don't put them in the chat. Don't say them out loud. But just think about those rumors that you've heard, whether it was religion or ego or, or history or from a societal standpoint. It's so many rumors impacting or affecting a man to want to seek services or seek help just based on how they would be viewed. Um, you know, if we're talking about religion, we're talking about, in, in most of the religious texts, the man is the forefront of the family or the provider or whatever the case is. So that's additional pressures on him. And then of course, in a religious context too, if you grew up how I grew up, it was one of those things where you can pray it away. You know, so oftentimes, you know, you have to view those things in context with what they are. So if you are of that, uh, religion or that faith or that spirituality to where you feel that you can pray it away, it's also okay to assist uh, assistance from somebody outside of the um, religion realm, you know, so go to a therapist, you know, your higher, your higher being put the therapist here as a resource, just like he put the resources there of anything else, you know, so just make sure you're doing that. Um, ego, when we're talking about ego, again, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of men still think certain diagnoses are, are, um, women prevalent. So even I have a handful of athletes, uh, some collegiate, some professional, and you wouldn't be leave how many stories I heard, uh, from these athletes, you know, um, I can't be depressed. I had 20 points last night, or I'm not depressed. I had seven tackles or I caught this many passes or whatever the case is. Um, that's for cheerleaders, you know, so these are some of the things that the ego uh, will have men believe in, you know, so instead of displaying their feelings and emotions, they feel like they would be weak viewed by their peers or their teammates or whatever the case is. So just make sure that you are not adding to these romas or these stigmas. Um, and when we look at a historic standpoint with the stigma or the romers, you know, men who live in small towns and areas, uh, have an increased rate of suicide. You know, the economy is shifting in those areas and or worldwide. And if you are the provider of your family or the main breadwinner, those additional pressures can, can definitely play on your ego and play on your purpose and meaning for um, what is my purpose? Am I only here to work and pay bills and take care of my family? You know, so those things can can start to add up to where that man is is having difficulty with understanding his role, but he don't say anything because that's what's been passed on throughout a historic standpoint. The man is supposed to do dot 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 dot. You know, so just make sure you're also taking those things for what it is. Um, and of course, mainstream society just is not as. Uh, sensitive when it is coming to men and expressing themselves, you know, unless it's pretty much like a, a, a negative connotation or a relationship issue. So just make sure you're understanding that. And don't forget the 
masculinity as a whole has been conflicted over the past several years too. Um, when they want to identify or assign masculinity to those who are pretty much overbearing and you know, true grit and rough and rugged, but that's not really the true sense or essence of what masculinity is. You know, masculinity can be peaceful and tranquil and uh, performative in a way to where everybody is benefiting, not just those who are dominant or wanting to take over. So just make sure you understand that. Um, and then, of course, the stigma based on society is also telling boys and men that they shouldn't cry. You know, those are for uh you're weak or you know all of those things are definitely objectifying how um a boy and man would probably want to express themselves so just make sure that you're not putting yourself in those responsibilities um and don't get caught up in the alpha you know male thing because it's not really fair to associate the kingdom animal kingdom uh logic into reason me personally i don't subscribe to it because it's it doesn't hold that much validity to me um so yeah you know it all depends and and realistically if you're thinking about the alpha male thing uh which animals or which species of animals or or things are you using because you know it can it can get blurred and i always challenge people when they say alpha male uh based on animal kingdom or whatever because if you're talking about animalistic view the lion you know the male line look way more feminine than the woman line. You know, the main, the the woman to go out and hunt, bring it back to the male, the pride and all that stuff. So realistically, it doesn't even make sense to compare the two. But, you know, that's just something to think about it also. Um, again, so just from a historic standpoint, I know it's time to wrap up so y'all can get your questions in if you have them. But ways you definitely can assist is just continue to ask them how they feel um stop telling boys and men to man up let them cry if they need to you want to also withhold your judgment if you do have it um encourage your brother son's father or you to seek services um if you need a strong support system then just make sure you're talking to people make sure you're doing different research make sure you're putting yourself in a position to um you know just get the assistance that you need you know so that way that man in your life can take his mask off can let his hair down can be free and uh avoid the stigma avoid the issues and the views of society the, the earlier we catch it the earlier we embrace it the more healthier they will be when they get older um and we don't want those things to be unfortunate when we have a society full of stoic people who don't know how to articulate or express themselves so it's definitely important to ensure that we are assisting um men boys to express themselves and articulate themselves in a way to where we allow them to feel human because they are and not letting me and most of the emotions are human characteristics and not necessarily gender specific characteristics so uh, with that, I will be taking questions if anybody have any questions. I don't know what's in the chat. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Harris. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat um, and we'll call your name out in the chat. And if you'd like to present your question yourself, um, I'll give you a moment to unmute and um, turn your video on if that's what you'd like. If not, just go ahead, type it in the chat and we'll read it aloud for all of our viewers to be able to read. Um, if you do present a question and unmute and turn your video on, please give a brief physical description like I gave in the beginning, um, just so that our viewers and our captioners know who is speaking. Um, so yeah, please put those in the chat and thank you again, Mr. Harris. Um, while we're waiting for questions, I did want to apologize. We are having some te technical difficulties with interpreters, and I believe um, we did have one interpreter briefly, but you could not actually see her hand. So we're just been dealing with that. But I did want to um, offer my sincere apologies on that. And I uh, we are working on it. But thank you so much, Mr. Harris, for a great um, a great session. And um, I will turn it back to you and Caitlin. So if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free.
Good. I guess we don't have any questions. Um, so my Probably. information, my information is in the chat. Um, if you do have a question that you didn't want to ask in the uh, group setting, so www.mentoheal.com, M-E-N-T-O-H-E-A-L.com. Feel free to send me an email, go to the uh, website, navigate is a resource list there too. If you need uh, resources on certain things. And of course, if you want to support, purchase the book or the board game or shirt um, in advocacy, then you can do that as well. And also if you need the YouTube channel and or the social media, that's also on the website. So definitely feel free to reach out if you did have a question or concern and you didn't want to um, address it here. Thank you so much, Harris. We really do, um, Mr. Harris, we really do appreciate it. I think you were so thorough and comprehensive. That's why we don't have any questions. But um, if that's it, then we greatly appreciate you speaking. And uh, last call for questions, anyone? OK, well, thank you again. And um, Liliana just said thank you. So it was a pleasure attending. And we look forward to seeing everyone else at the remaining sessions. All right, y'all have a good day.